Okay, everybody, I'm back. Here we go again. This is Dion coming back at you. Now we're at Paisley Park. We're uh, beyond securing our phones, and our tour is about to start. This is the VIP tour. I'm going to keep emphasizing that the VIP tour is the one you want to take. Now, uh, as we proceeded towards, I should say, the atrium, directly in front of us, are some steps and these steps lead up to Prince's private quarters and what they did was separated it with a um, I guess what one would call a um, velvet rope uh, separated that so as I stated as we walk towards the atrium you see uh, some steps that are blocked off and that is Prince's private quarters uh, his private quarters are not open to the tour. However, I'll have to tell you about Majesty and Divinity, his two doves, which is really cool. Um, and it's an interesting story with them, and I'll share that with you shortly. Um, here is the jump drive right here that we purchased. And I'll tell you more about that for Studio B, and then you'll be able to see my picture uh, that I had taken in Studio B. However, uh, as we proceed along the wall, there's platinum and gold albums, uh, and of course, it's encased over uh, a clear encasement, uh, I'm sure, for security reasons. And as you proceed to your right of the staircase, you walk a little while longer to your right, and you see um, what is this huge frame of tickets. Um, I think they were tickets in Europe, um, but it was... Uh, man, it had to have been over 50, 100 tours uh, that Prince, um, you know, during the time when he was touring. And it was tickets from every location, um, which is really cool. Now, it's about to get interesting because right on the other side of that, if you made an immediate right, there's a wall there. And that wall is now painted, I think it was purple or pink. And that wall is where the elevator was. Now, mind you, right across from this wall where the elevator was, where Prince was found, um, is the atrium. And even more so is the uh, Paisley Park replica, the urn. Uh, so you, unless you knew that the uh, elevator was there, but I heard a staff person mention that to somebody, and um, so it just brought it home um, that we were in his home and he was not here. And then right across from what would have been the elevator is a replica of Paisley Park. It's an urn and it's uh, exactly like it. You can see it online um, and it's beautifully done. Um, it's encased in like a plexiglass encasement and it sits directly in the center of the atrium. Oh, I forgot about this. Before you get to the tickets, that huge frame, you have the symbol and Prince's eyes. I mean, whoever did that artistry, uh, it was fabulous because those eyes looked just like Prince. And it was like he greeted you as you walked into his home. But at the same time, when you looked at those eyes, Prior to you know getting to that area where the elevator and where the replica of Paisley Park, the urn, uh, where his remains are, um, you just look at into those eyes and it's just you know it's just deep and it brings about I guess a calming spirit. I don't know um, if you're religious, you know it's an angelic feeling, uh, spiritual feeling when you're in there. Uh, there's a presence felt. Um, so anyway, as we proceeded to uh, the area where the urn, there were boxes of Kleenex. And the tour guide, of course, uh, and this is what they did, uh, allowed anyone who wanted to mourn the death of Prince to be able to stand. And, and you know, for me, I just, you know, you stood there and you're like, is this what it's all about? I mean, is this what death is about? I mean, I, you know, uh, I'm a Christian and absent from the body is present with the Lord. But it was just like all of this and what does it all mean? Um, 
So eternal life was something he always spoke of as a Jehovah Witness. And so to see all these people uh, crying and uh, sobbing and sniffles and at times I had to kind of turn away because you just didn't like to see people sad. So I don't know if Prince got them through times of, you know, hardship. Uh, they got them through times of, you know, happiness. But it was just the enormity of it all and that this man wasn't there and that he was so young and that he had so much more life and he had started doing so much in philanthropy and, um, you know, social causes, which there are so many. And, um, you know, you can hear that from Van Jones and some of the other people that he worked with, um, how, you know, they speak of him. So anyway, I'm going to let you ponder on that and I'll come right back and we'll go to the next video. Thanks a lot.